So one of the things that I've really been interested in, in covering the past week is comic books. And that's because we are in some crazy times right now. It kind of looks like the comic book industry is done. Now, I think indie comics will be around. You can for sure get those. But as far as mainstream comics, I think those are done. I think it's going to be an interesting shift. What are they going to do? Are they going to farm the characters out? Because make no mistake, AT&T will have no problem closing DC Comics. And Disney, I don't think, has any problem closing Marvel Comics either. They can just license the characters out to other people. It doesn't really matter to them. What matters to them is profit, which is what it all comes down to. Of course, comic book professionals don't really care about that. All they care about is pushing their message, as I've shown multiple times through multiple videos. But the people that do care about staying open are comic book shops. And I don't think that they're going to make it through this, at least most of them, which will probably lead to the end of Diamond because Diamond needs a certain amount of people to distribute comics to or it's just not feasible for them to stay open. So they pulled the plug. Comic book shops pretty much are going to have no new product for who knows how long. A lot of retailers, or a lot of publishers, such as Boom, Valiant, and a few others, have said pencils down. We're not going to put any product out. DC Comics, however, has said we're staying open, whatever that means. It's really a lousy statement. Marvel hasn't said anything. So we don't know what's happening. Now, here's the problem if DC and Marvel stay open. So let's say they're going to do digital. They're going to do digital comic books. Okay, you know, you're thinking, oh, that's fine. They're going to do digital books. Big deal. Who cares? All right, well, the comic book shops that are going to stay open will care. Because that means over the next couple of weeks on New Comic Book Day, there'll be digital comics on DC and Marvel's websites and on Comixology for purchase. Now, why this is a big deal is because comic book shops won't be receiving that product. And then when they do open back up, what is that what does that mean? What's going to happen? So is are, is Diamond going to ship weeks or maybe even months old comic books to the comic book shop? That's a big question. So you're at that point shipping outdated books to comic book shops. You're going to ship them books that are outdated. That's kind of a problem because no one cares about buying older books. And then you also have to remember the thousand of dollars that's going to be charged to the comic book shops right as they open because Diamond is just going to slap them with a bill for thousands of dollars worth of product after they've already been like losing money for months. It's a, it's a terrible situation. Terrible situation. And then you have the fact that most people don't buy digital books. If anything, they're just going to go read them for free. Digital books are highly overpriced. They charge the full price of a actual printed comic for a digital book. So four to six bucks, whatever they're charging in the store, that's what you're paying for the digital book. It's, it's not going to work. If comic book shops go to business, that's pretty much the end of the comic book industry. And you would think comic book pros would want to fix things with consumers. Because as you can see, Jerry Dugan here just doesn't care about holding up any kind of prof professional image. I did a video the other day going over just how nasty comic book pros are. Here's the thing that's really interesting. So in the face of collapse... Their industry is dying before their eyes. The future has never been more uncertain. You would think that they would want to try to get some goodwill going because, well, what can they do? Well, they do have the option to do crowdfunders and still do their jobs, but just do Kickstarters and Indiegogos. But they're not going to do that. What are they doing? Well, instead of wondering and talking about the comic book industry, <laughs> they're sitting here whining about politics. I challenge you. Go look up any comic book creator. If you've got a comic book lying around, look at the creative team on it. Find them on Twitter. I 100% guarantee to you, they're not talking about comic books. They're whining about politics. And they're always going to be from the left perspective, whining about people on the right. That's all they're going to do all day long. It's arguably 
one of the reasons why the medium sucks because there's no thought of diversity. They all have the same line of thinking. They're all super woke and they all want to, you know, push this politically correct narrative in every single book. It's part of the reason why the medium sucks and why it's lost so much business. And make no mistake, they've been losing a lot of business. February 2020 sales drop as Marvel and DC prepare for the future. Every year, they lose money. And they've been doing this weird thing now where they've been putting manga sales in the graphic novels so that they can kind of hide and mask the dead sales of comic books. <laughs> it's not fooling anybody. But, but Jerry here... He's like, well, I'm just going to keep on insulting fans, treat them like trash, because he can say whatever he wants to fans. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He can say whatever. I've already shown you a tweet from Max Bemis, who wrote Moon Knight, where he told fans to uh, pretty much lick his rear end clean and then talked about using a piece on them to make them do it. So you can say whatever you want. Two fans as a comic book creator. It doesn't matter. You won't get in any trouble. You won't face any repercussions from Marvel or the editor-in-chief or the president. You're allowed to do and say whatever you want. And you're going to see that exactly here. So somebody shares X of Swords, which is a stupid event. I went over this. It's pretty much just the X-Men using swords. It's like this is about as low in creativity as you can get when it's coming to an event. Like, why does Wolverine need a sword, number one? It's stupid. It's a stupid idea, and that's why this guy right here is coming here sharing an eye-rolling meme because it's a stupid idea. So Jerry Dugan comes in, seeks this guy out, gets ratioed, by the way, but seeks this out. So this is another thing. They'll go out of their way looking for confrontation, but as soon as you say something to the elite god of a comic book pro, because these people are rock stars in their mind. They think they're the coolest of the cool. And you should be just an owl when you see them. You should be like, whoa, my God, it's Jerry Dugan. Even though like one person out of a room of 50,000 would even know who this guy is. Uh, they're elitists. They're, they're horrible people. And they show it time and time again. So this guy goes out of his way, says, Nate, wishing you... On your continuing, wishing you success on your continuing journey outside of comics. And this guy comes in right here and says, No wonder this industry is tumbling so professional. And then Jerry comes in out of nowhere again. Of course, he's looking for a fight here, but like a typical blue check mark as well. You know, you're not allowed to say anything to these people or they'll go crazy. You ding-dongs don't get to show up in my mentions and keep your civilian status. You can say whatever the hell you want, anywhere you want, except in the mentions of someone else. And then Mechmaster comes in here and says, At Jerry Dugan, you're an a-hole. <laughs> kind, of, kind of harsh, but this guy's a consumer. You know, think of you live if you work in a service job, right? And this is one I always like to put out there. You work in a service job, you get crap done all the time. Are you allowed to do what these people do? No. You're allowed to... You, this is like, you know, you going up to somebody at Walmart and asking them a question. You're like, <laughs> F you! You know what I'm saying? So Jerry comes back and says, Eat a bag of pre-FDs, but nice grammar. Very professional. This is exactly what I've been talking about when it comes to these people and their attitudes and how they act. And it doesn't just stop right there. They know, they, it's open among them that they don't need to give you good customer service and they don't need to care. Here's another conversation right here. This is Patch Zercher. Are comic pros more negative than comic fans? Gets a reply. Yes, in few industries can pros talk down to a client and higher ups let them keep a job. Bet it for their, be it for their political beliefs or critiques this isn't all pros just a good majority of them there's little to no customer service in comics anymore it's actually a very professional response very kind friendly what's patch do does it respond to him nope it said he gaslights him gaslights him with a retweet 
and says, why is every comic skate guy obsessed with comic customer service? They want pros to warm up to them, and yet the insults I've seen aimed at people I've worked with at myself, if I'm a if I if a waitress served you a meal you didn't like, would you call her a a this word? So look at look at how he twists that. This is actually he got a really good response and he twists it into an insult and some kind of gaslight. So this is what I'm talking about. So they're obsessed with customers. So it's because you treat us like trash. This guy nailed it. He didn't like it, so he 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 gaslit him. Then Ron Mars comes in here, another uh, another nasty comic book pro, and he says, "There's a deep misunderstanding of who the client is here, and my business card says writer, not customer service. But you're on social media attacking customers, people that are walking away left and right." When it comes to the comic book industry, every month they lose sales year after year after year. Every year sees a drop. And it's because of people like Ron Mars, Patch Searcher, Jerry Dugan, and so on and so on. So you get this here from Super Divorce. What exactly is the deep misunderstanding? Are we wrong in saying fans who purchase the work? are a writer's clients. So Ron Mar says, yes, that's wrong. Writers are hired by publishers. Publishers sell to retailers and retailers sell to fans. So my client is the publisher, not the fan. Okay. Okay, Ron. But you sell to retailers. Retailers do sell to fans, but fans don't see the retailers of the creator of the work. You're the creator of the work. They become fans of you. They become fans of you. That's like what the, th- the point of a fan. They're not fans of the retailer. They're fans of you. So when you act like an ass to fans, they don't go buy from the retailers anymore, you jackass. And because of that, they lose money because of you. Because of you, Ron. You. I wonder how much money you've cost. I wonder how much money you've cost retailers over the years. I would imagine you're likely responsible for a percentage drop or two. All of you are. All of you have ran the comic book industry into the ground. And time's up. Time is up. And I don't know if the comic book industry can be saved. I would imagine that your tunes will change when everything closes. Because what are you going to do? None of you are going to be able to crowdfund and make a living off of that because you've insulted the fans for so long. We're never going to let people forget about it. (laughs) So I don't know what you guys are going to do. It's going to be an interesting year because I would imagine that the way that they think and speak is going to change and they're going to come crawling back to fans and it's just not going to work out very well for them. I feel bad for the comic book shops, but I don't feel bad for comic book pros. They've pushed fans away from years, for years. And, you know, karma's, karma's a bitch. I don't know what to say. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts on all this. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Also, share the video. Get the word out there if you would. Throw a like up. Make sure you're still subscribed. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that notification bell, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out. Also, take a moment. Make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. Uh, There's something going on right now, and they've been unsubscribing people. So just take a second and double check on that and subscribe if you're new.